What's up, everybody? Welcome back to our channel. Dr. Maxfield. Dr. Shaw. Today, we're going to be talking about dandruff. But first, why do we have this ridiculous <laughs> microphone in front of us? I'll tell you why. Because we shot this dandruff video three times. First time, the video was unusable because we shot in front of a windy window instead of our lights because we thought that the natural lighting would look cool. But we used a green screen, so it just looked horrible. And then we shot another video the following week, spent all day Saturday shooting video up here. And then the audio was unusable. And so we're double recording audio and hopefully now we can start putting out content consistently. <laughs> we shoot every week, but we haven't been putting content out because because we've been making unusable videos. Oh and God. so. <laughs> All right, like maybe just because we're doctors. This is just not what we do. So bear with us. Yeah, if anybody that's on like the, the video production side, audio production side wants to reach out to us to kind of help us create more content, that would be very helpful. Um, drop a comment below but today dandruff dandruff the flaky white things that end up on your shirt they kind of ruin your shirts they kind of end up all over everything very frustrating we're going to talk to you about dandruff how to treat it what causes it and what kind of things to avoid that may potentially be making your dandruff worse and we also have a little dermatology hack a little tip that can help you knock it back dermatology hacks coming at you here we go here we go causes it dandruff seborrheic dermatitis seborrheic dermatitis right so is seborrheic dermatitis and dandruff the same thing kind of they're on basically the same spectrum so say dandruff is really just kind of what we're referring to when you refer to that flaking that you see in the scalp and then seborrheic dermatitis is sort of that overarching theme i kind of can affect the chest the back the eyebrows um the t-zone uh, the beard distribution, the ears often as yes, well. Yes, ears. Ears, very common area to get seborrheic dermatitis. But that flaking that you see kind of all over, that's seborrheic dermatitis. And then kind of on the smaller spectrum, dandruff kind of affecting the scalp. So a lot of our tips and tricks here will actually kind of work for seborrhea in general. But we're going to be focusing on dandruff of the scalp and focusing on shampoos and stuff that can kind of get you going in the right direction. So what causes it? I know. Okay. <laughs> Pick me. <laughs> All right. So dandruff, you know, the same player, malassezia, fur, fur, malassezia, globosa, this yeast sucks. It's everywhere, apparently. I don't know what it does good for us. It must do something wonderful. But it, here it's causing inflammation. The yeast causing inflammation leads to the flakes. So yeast, inflammation, flaking. So if we use a treatment that targets the yeast, the inflammation, or the flaking, then we can kind of get you going in the right direction. So all our treatments are always targeted at what is causing this disease. And if we know what's causing the disease, then we can know how to treat the disease, and then we know why it's gonna work for you. This is the same yeast organism that causes malassezia folliculitis, also referred to as fungal acne on the online space, and also tinea versicolor, which causes a rash on the chest and back. So this, this same malassezia yeast organism is causing a lot of different diseases. Um, and so we'll talk about how to treat this. Okay, so let's talk about each one of these parts individually. Let's talk about the yeast. So what can we use in the scalp, in our hair, that's gonna target this yeast organism? So one of my favorite, favorite things over the counter products to use for this is Nizerol shampoo or ketoconazole shampoo. Ketoconazole shampoo over the counter is a 1% ketoconazole. Very effective for eliminating this yeast organism. It also helps a lot with inflammation. Uh, but this Nizerol shampoo is going to be one of the top things to try to get rid of this yeast organism that's living on your scalp. And Nizerol shampoo also has a couple other added benefits. It's anti-inflammatory. I personally like selenium sulfide. Um, it's a sulfur-based product, as well as, having, as well as having selenium in it. It helps kill the yeast. Another option is zinc pyrithione, found in head and shoulders. So your kind of three options to get rid of the yeast organism is your Nizerol shampoo, your Selsun Blue shampoo. Stinky, potentially. Or your, um, or your head and shoulder shampoo. So those three kind of target um, the fungus with, that is causing this. Okay, so sort of now if we get rid of the yeast, we've sort of stopped it in its track what's causing the inflammation. So all three of these are going to be great for getting rid of that inflammation as well. Also, if you see us um, as in the office, we have prescription medications, usually steroid solutions that you can use in your scalp that will get rid of that underlying inflammation that you're seeing. Yeah, and we do have some topical things also work as shampoos, work as scalp solutions that would also target the yeast directly. So we have stronger stuff if you come see us in the office, if those over-the-counter medications aren't working for you, we have prescription medications that are both stronger and more effective at treating this yeast organism and the inflammation. 
And then the last step is the scaling. So you get this scaling that happens as a result of the inflammation. And what's a really good ingredient to break down that scaling? Uh, one of the best is probably salicylic acid, something you can use for a lot of things. And here, salicylic acid is great for breaking down the scale. And it also concentrates in the sebaceous glands. Sorry, <laughs> it's been a while. I thought you'd read my mind. It concentrates <laughs> in the sebaceous glands, the beta hydroxy acid. Unlike almost all of the other ones, it's lipophilic, meaning it dissolves in oil. And so it can get into the oil glands of your scalp in a way that a lot of others can't. Which is why we love salicylic acid for acne because it's able to kind of get into that sebaceous gunk or that oil and kind of break it down. And so it's gonna have the same effect on the scalp and it's also gonna be very effective for getting in there and breaking down that scale and oil. All right, all right, Dr. Shaw, what's your hack? What's your tip? So secret dermatology hack, this is my recommendation. If you've tried these shampoos, which a lot of you with dandruff have tried these shampoos, here's something that you can do uh, that's gonna give you that additive benefit is if a lot of people have the scale and these medications or these topical shampoos are not helping. And the reason why is because the scale is just so thick that these medications are not able to penetrate in and really get a, a good effect. And so if you use a salicylic shampoo, which is something like your Neutrogena T-Sal, and you also use something like the Nizerol shampoo, so these two together will actually have additive benefits together. So I would use these two shampoos together and that's gonna really push you in the right direction. Yeah break down the scale so the active medication can actually get to your scalp. That's gonna help give you a double effect. Another thing to keep in mind is that this yeast organism can become resistant to these anti-yeast medications, anti-yeast shampoos. And so you might find yourself needing to switch off between two or three even different active ingredients. Right, so you could rotate potentially use Salsin Blue one day and then use your head and shoulders the next day. Another thing worth mentioning here is a lot of people are very much interested in some of these more natural ingredients or what they what they believe to be a more natural ingredient. So something like tea tree oil, um, pretty effective antifungal agent. And so it can potentially get rid of that malassezia yeast organism that's triggering this whole thing. But I want you to be aware that tea tree oil can be pretty irritating to a lot of people's skin, sometimes cause allergy and stuff like that. Um, if you are looking for something Thing that's a little bit more uh, quote unquote natural, then tea tree oil would be a good option, a decent option um, for dandruff as well. So um, not my first choice. Um, if, it, if you wanna talk about what my first choice is, I would say get the Neutrogena t sal shampoo, hit it with the Nizerol shampoo afterwards. That's gonna get you the most effect over the counter. If that doesn't work, come see us in the office. We have powerful ingredients that'll get you going in the right direction. What can you help, what, what should you not do? What should you not be doing? So this is one of the things that I'm always like, huge proponent of is is doing the easiest thing to do is stop doing things that are making your problems worse right so that's why i'm always doing all these videos debunking videos why i'm always like this is a bad trend because a lot of people they want to have improved skin they want to have improved hair and they're doing things that are potentially harmful so instead of buying a new product that's gonna get rid of your issue, it's better to try to stop doing things that are potentially making your problem worse and so one of the things that makes dandruff worse is olive oil boom Olive oil, it's, okay, I, we have nothing against oils, actually. In fact, oils as a group work really well as moisturizers in a lot of different ways, but olive oil in particular, Malice's yeast, love it. They love it. We add this to the cultures to actually grow this yeast. So you're, like, you're like literally feeding this little yeast. You're giving him a ton of food. It's a buffet for him if you're putting this on your scalp. So like we said earlier, the yeast organism is kind of what triggers this whole thing. It starts this whole cascade for us. And so ultimately, if you are feeding this with olive oil, it's going to make it worse. And so there were some early studies that were done, I believe in the 80s, that showed that you could grow the malassezia yeast organism on a plate of olive oil. And therefore, you are literally putting fuel on the fire. Figuratively, just saying, figuratively putting fuel on that fire. Okay, grammar police out. That's a good point. If you're not getting better, it's actually important to make sure that you have just dandruff. Uh, there's a lot of other things that can cause this, psoriasis, probably being one of the most common. Um, yeah, so are a lot of other things that cause flakiness in, in the scalp area. Psoriasis, like you said, being the most common. And so, you know, if you're using all these over-the-counter dandruff shampoos and you have psoriasis, probably the only one of all of those that's actually going to help would be the uh, salicylic acid shampoos. Yeah, and even then you're not gonna respond. So just make sure you're treating the right thing. We're super adamant about that because we always wanna know why, what you're doing, why you're doing it, and make sure you're targeting the right thing. Those are our tips. If you have any questions, leave them below. Uh, thank you all for your trust and support. Yeah, thank you all so much.
He actually doesn't grow hair on his neck. I should laser my neck so I don't have to shave it. I don't know. Can we fire up the lasers right now? We could, but then you're going to have to zap. What? Uh, what's your favorite curry? What does that mean, a curry? Your favorite curry? What Is it the mean? Penang curry? The Masaman curry? What do you mean for like Thai curry? Yeah, or Thai curries. Indian curries? Or... So, I didn't know there uh, was a difference. Curry is like a very broad sort of term, uh, ultimately. Can't get this, an this is like, this a, like a much longer video on, on this. I like the Masaman curry from, from the, if you're talking about just Thais. Yeah? Yeah, Masaman. Okay. I don't know if that's Masaman how you say curry. it.